on this episode of Star Trek Universe, I said jump down on Breen Street. <laughs> 21 Breen Street. <laughs> We're discussing <laughs> Discovery 509, Lagrange Point, right after a few words from these undercover Starfleet officers in Breen uniforms. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen in on two lifelong friends, sit and chat about Star Trek. My name's Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. Dave, how's it going, buddy? I don't know. It's going. It's right. going. Good. Well, good. And I'm glad it's moving. I'm feeling uh, revved up because I watched yeah. Fur- uh, Furiosa today. Okay. And it's uh, it's just, I, I, it was like, I had heard of this effect, but I definitely had to like, get my driving under control when I left the theater. Cause I just like, you get those, like those car chase movies. I think the fast and the furious have a similar effect. Like people get more crashes on the way home. <laughs> yeah. So I had to be like, okay, drive like normal. Don't, don't drive like Furiosa. I became aware of that when I was six years old for my sixth birthday, my mom and dad took me to go see the Michael Keaton Batman. Mm. And we got in my mom's tiny red, uh, Pontiac Le Mans. Hmm. <laughs> And she was like, let me rev up my Batmobile. And she drove like a bat out of hell <laughs> all the way home. I believe that fully. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, wh- so we, we, we've seen a new episode of Discovery that we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, we're, what did you, what'd you think of this here new episode? Um, it had some really pretty stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was an infuriating piece of shit episode especially (laughs) for jonathan uh, for an episode that jonathan frakes directed i was just like jesus christ well directed beautifully (laughs) um i I didn't think it was a piece of shit episode i did think it was like like okay i like these kinds of episodes i like just sort of like war and you gotta solve a problem and you got to get into the people, you got to infiltrate or whatever. I really like these kinds of these kinds of situations on Star Trek. I you love also like, like a heist movie. Oh, I love a heist movie. Um, but I love reading books where like they have to like figure out how to get beyond the Borg sensors to do the thing or whatever. I love that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But for it, I think <laughs> the thing that bothered me is it made the brain seem really underpowered. If they like, oh no, they lost the race. The whole season we've been like, we got to beat the Breen to this, and then it's like you lost, you lost the race, and it's gone. The first the first moments of the episode, the 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 container is gone, and then it's like the Breen just they they just board a Breen ship to you know like with very little problem. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like very little problem. No, no stakes. No one dies to make it happen. No, like major. Like at one point, I thought Book might die because she jumps through the portal, and then uh, that's that. That was that was the one part of the episode that I did think was kind of bullshit because like they, it was clear that they had they couldn't figure out a way to write around the fact that they beamed Book out, but not Michael, because. She jumps through the portal right as the thing is breaking the seal, and mm-hmm. so he gets beamed out, but they never showed it, so they couldn't decide when... I think they couldn't decide when Book got beamed out exactly, so they just had mm-hmm. him show up on Discovery without showing him, like, flying through the airlock or whatever. You you can see him beam out. I had to rewind oh, you it. you can? You can see him. It's very... It's really, like, just blink and you'll miss it, but you're also like, why couldn't they beam the the thing? But the whole... Oh God! What is trash to you about this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, at the beginning of the episode, they're like, "Okay, we can jump. We just don't know where." And then they jump, and they're about to get sucked into a black hole. Mm-hmm. All right, so they finagle their way out. Wouldn't it? Would it not make sense for while they're trying to get out of the black hole for the brain to show up and get the thing and run off with it? Because they were still cloaked. The brain wouldn't have even known they were there. Well, sure, sure. Because the way they did it, it, they got out of the black hole, and then they stand around 
with their thumbs in their asses. Yeah. Talking about, like, the progenitor tech and how they probably created the black holes because they're primordial black holes. And, <laughs> oh, look at all this. And then the brain fucking show up and grab it. And they're like, oh, no. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. It's a really good point that, like, it's the same problem we have last week's episode where it's like, this is, minutes count. We don't have time to listen to the, the, the speech from the lady from the archive. We got to, we got to, we got to skip past this dialogue tree because we're in a hurry and then you jump to like a few minutes later and jet reno is telling a story about her life uh-huh. when 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 it, all moments are clutch they take time to let like stamets and jet and all these like people just like take their time and i'm like wh- and in that moment it it kind of uh i feel like it shows this like okay so the 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 villains of star trek like the the other like cultures the, that the writers come- <laughs> the other cultures of of Star Trek that often come up against the Federation, who are often uh-huh. portrayed as villains of the story, they often talk about the Federation as like, yeah, they're they're soft. Their empathy is their problem. You know, they they're they're like they're too weak. They're not willing to do what they have to do to survive. In the you know whatever, like we're 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 warriors. They're the soft ones. But it also, this one highlights, they're also the scientists, you know, and like that moment highlights this big weakness of them as the scientists where they have this moment where they should have just grabbed the goal and instead they stand around going, I wonder, like this is interesting. And then they just get beaten to the punch by uh, <laughs> yep. the Breen. That, that, yeah, that's terrible. You're, you're and a it, very good point. <laughs> it is a thing that happens over and over in this episode. Mm. Terrible timing with Michael and Book while they are dressed up like Breen on the Breen ship. Don't know why the Breen don't have like some sort of sensors that would be like, hey, holy shit, there are people who aren't Breen on the, on the ship. Yeah, you there's know, just human life signs detected or whatever. Sweeping, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, but yeah, let's, uh, you know, and Michael even like hangs the lantern on it and says, this is a terrible time to talk about this, but let's go off into this little alcove over here and talk about our feelings. It- <laughs> It's like you're in the middle of a life and death, like seconds ticking away on the clock mission, Michael. Yeah. What you doing? Why, yeah. Why are you suddenly the worst captain ever? <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Uh, Tilly taking time out to tell Rainer he should stop pacing and sit down on the captain's chair. Like, oh my Christ, why is this happening? Like, Adira on the Breen ship, not doing her hacking, just staring at Reese fighting Breen soldiers. Like, Tilly just staring awkwardly at Rainer, <laughs> talking about getting Michael back from the portal. Like, what is, like, they just, just, they just keep taking these, like, big chunks of time away from this very time-sensitive yeah. mission. So, when that's kind of what I was getting at, like, and I agree with you completely, but also... It is just so easy for them to come up with this plan to infiltrate a Breen ship. It takes them, like, no time at all. And it just seems like this would be the kind of thing that would be, like... In in other in other situations on Star Trek, like when when they had to go to, uh, I'm thinking of like that uh, next generation episode when they have to go to Romulus as Romulans, right? Mm-hmm. That mission is presented to them as a mission. Like they come to them and go, like, all right, we got this long plan, and here's the plan, and then they go and do it. Like they they have their like, so they have the tech to disguise them and like all this stuff is is presented to them from Starfleet. So you're like, all right. That seems like a good plan. Let's go do it. Right. This is like, let's just do a thing that seems like it should be way harder than it is. And then on top of that, they have moments like you're talking about that make them seem totally inept and not focused. Yeah. And so it makes this entire like ordeal seem too easy and like, Like, they're not even trying. They're just stumbling through. And they don't really succeed at the end. They do succeed in Michael getting into the thing, which is all I knew they were going to do. As soon as I saw they had the portal open, I was like, okay, so Michael's going to end up going through it because she has the information. She's going to end up going through it. Uh, But the, yeah, it it was very predictable. Um, I I was uh, not, I was not a fan of the action of this episode. (laughs) Yeah. Like, and... Like, I thought the brain were supposed to be warriors, and, like, Rainer is just, like, not Rainer, uh, Reese is just, like, taking them down. Yeah. He's just, 
I don't know what they're, they're, they must be planning a Star Trek Reese uh, series because like last se- last episode <laughs> he was like I'm the best captain I'm so decisive and awesome it was like I was like yeah I'm on Reese's team and this episode is like also I'm a total like hand to hand combat badass I'm like what is what are they planning for Reese <laughs> yeah I, I, okay let's do something <laughs> yeah like I'm I'm sure. on board he's cool. <laughs> He's been on the show all these years, and uh, I'm just now finding out that he's like my, my favorite character on the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I wish you'd shown me this three seasons ago, or you know, so, sprinkled it in. Instead, you gave me two back to back episodes where he like impresses the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, and he's no no frills, always business. Like uh, Rainer or someone comes on the bridge, and he just like hops up. This episode earlier in the episode, I think he's in the captain's chair, and someone walks in and takes over, and he just jumps up and moves on. Like the camera barely focuses on him. It's just, it's a, it, it's just. I don't know. They've they've really treated his character strangely. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> also book this i know that like we've had him do engineering stuff in the past but i felt like book this episode was like diving around doing engineering like he was like action engineer uh-huh. which i wasn't opposed to it's just like never a thing we've seen him do like so last like last week they were like hey come help in engineering and this week they were like hey he's just still in engineering and like he's like running around slide like literally sliding into place to do little coupling changes and stuff and i'm like i mean it was cool to watch but like it doesn't we've feel seen, we've like, seen him do stuff like that on his ship sure absolutely on his ship but his ship is like he's the only one operating it, so it makes more yeah. sense that he's got to run around. That's the whole thing. And uh-huh. I, I guess his style of engineering would still be like that in a pinch. But there's the thing. Book's the only one in a hurry. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is absolutely true. Uh, Reese is kicking ass. Book is sliding around doing cool engineering stuff. And everyone else is like having conversations about their feelings while doing what should be the hardest thing they've ever done. We've got uh, we got Colbert and Stamets over here deciding to walk Adira to their first day of kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> it's like really slow walking them the, yeah the ki- kindergarten. also why are they walking at all <laughs> like it, it just needed to be a transport out like so yeah. often on the show i'm like why is anyone standing before they go somewhere <laughs> well they do they make a point of having everybody like just like tapping out oh they're gone oh jesus yeah. god and then all of a sudden <laughs> like, they've got to take a long slow walk down a corridor and reassure Adira, because they've been on the ship for, what, three, four years mm-hmm. now, and they're still not feeling good about it. And Yeah. Don't know if... Like, they just turned around and said, I could do it, and I could do it quick. Cool, you're going on the away mission. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it does go with the entire plot they've had for their character this entire season, which is, like, they're unsure of themselves, and they need to, like, uh, you know figure that out but it is uh yeah it's it, it's doesn't feel like i don't know it doesn't feel good it feels like why are we de- it's it's the last two episodes of this show and uh-huh. we're dealing with a crewman that is still just trying to figure out if they should be a crewman you know i don't know like if they yeah. if they're if they're in for this life or something like that i don't know it just feels feels like this this should be the the crew operating at full capacity and going for it, you know? And they literally had a scene this episode with Adira, Stamets, and Tilly all together, all of them stammering and stuttering and acting like they were unsure of themselves at the same in the same conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I I did not dislike this episode near as much as you did. Um, I found it fine. Um, but I, the biggest problem I had was it just like, that seemed way too easy. Like the brain have been like built up to be this huge threat. And then they're like, well, we could just go over there and pick it up. (laughs) Like they were going to (laughs) run to the store. I was like, what? You can yeah. do that if that's a, and I know it had a lot of like intricacies and I know they had to like ram the sh- shield with the ship and all this. Like there were a lot of stuff they had to do, but it just uh, felt like it should have been, Hey, we can go over there and put a transporter lock, but it's a suicide mission. And then the ramming of the shield may be like a last minute addition to the plan that gets them out of there. So they, they, and it was, but it was like, 
it just felt like thing after thing that was like felt too easy. I never felt like any of the crewmen were at threat and I should have felt like they were all at threat because they're doing no. such a hard thing. They've already introduced the fact that this tech is going to bring people back from the dead. No, there are no stakes at all uh, anymore yeah, for this a, season. It's a it's fair, over. it's fair, uh, you know, fear or point. <sighs> well, I, I hate that that is the overall feeling we have about this episode. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I didn't, in, I enjoyed the experience of watching this episode. Um, but I, I had my issue, <laughs> but it sounds like you had a lot more. Well, uh, okay, to, to, to be fair, one, I enjoyed watching the episode. I always enjoy watching the episode, even when it's a shit episode. <laughs> uh, two, you seem to have agreed with everything I've said. So yeah. apparently you do have all the issues I did. You just didn't notice them. Maybe. Well, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Know. I mean, like, I didn't notice the specific scenes you noticed. Uh, so I just didn't like, I guess I was, I, my, my suspension of disbelief was greater than yours throughout this episode. Cause I was just like going with it, you know? Um, so I didn't have that issue. And I think that's the power. Like there's, you can always nitpick these kinds of moments. Like why did they have a character moment when they should have been in a hurry? Like that's something that almost all shows do. It's just Mm -hmm. that when you set up the, such a big moment for the crew to infiltrate a Breen ship, it just feels like everything should be on guard. Everything should be heightened. And it was not, (laughs) it was very much like they were just like going about their business and that like they're on the, I never felt They walked onto the bridge of the Breen ship, and I never felt like they were in threat at all. You know what I mean? Like, it never felt like uh, Adira and Reese were, like, in danger. Nah. The Breen should be able to at least tell other Breen apart and be able to tell who this bridge crew and not. It just seems like a total security failure if you don't. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't, it didn't make any sense to me. And also, like, I love the, the there was like the one brain who was just like, "Yeah, let's let's get you in an oil bath." Person I've never met before. Uh, yeah, that was that was funny and weird. I enjoyed that part. <laughs> I mean, it was funny, but yeah, it doesn't hold up under any kind of like logic scrutiny. Well, I don't know. We 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 don't know what those uh we don't know anything about their culture so like they, we know now that they have like some sort of weird oil bath parties uh that may or may not be sexual but they definitely sound sexual oh, the way they're the definitely way, sexual well you know they may or may not be in the universe but th- that's definitely the uh, implication that like book was book and burnham were playing with yeah their culture does not like walls we know we knew that from their their bridge, but now we know that from that conversation. <laughs> there are no boundaries in the Breen world. Mm, yes, indeed, no barriers, no boundaries. Socially, rank wise. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, Iron Man face shot that they used throughout the the, the episode? Uh, I mean, it's been pretty. That's been a pretty standard thing. I didn't even really think about it too much. Is is uh, whenever they're in their environmental suits doing mm-hmm. anything outside, they have the same shots, and they've had that since the beginning. Well, the one thing they did this episode that I've never seen them do, they did a shot of all three of them at one time from inside yeah. their suits, saying something together. It felt very. Let me first say, I didn't hate it. I thought it worked, but. <laughs> It was super Power Rangers. Like they all like, let's do it mm-hmm. or whatever. It like cut to a shot of all three of them. And I was like, I have never, I don't think in Star Trek, I may be not thinking of it, but I can't remember a Star Trek moment where they had three different cameras on, like having a line down the middle of the scene like that. Can you think yeah. of other examples of that? Um, I feel like Lower Decks has done it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they've done it on Discovery before. Uh, what it reminded me of was the first Hulk movie hmm. because, um, oh, whoever the hell directed that movie, <laughs> I can't remember now, did a lot of that kind of stuff because it looked huh. like comic book panels. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was a neat thing that they did in Hulk back in whatever it was, 2003. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So, uh yeah, but this uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. This felt very Power Rangers. I thought of Power Rangers as yeah. well when Yeah, well, and they're all in suits. Like it just Yeah. 
yeah, it, that moment in particular felt very, very Power Rangers and just, I don't know, weird. It was weird. And now that you mention it, the, the, these 32nd century brain suits just look like Mighty Morphin Jello Rangers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the suits, I, I don't really have a big problem with the suits, but they're fine. Yeah, they're they're fine. It's just you know they look like Power Rangers. That's all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they got the vibe for sure. There was one shot they did of like Reese or Adira talking about how they're they're on the bridge now, but they showed the view of them looking like how what they're seeing through that little green slit. Mm-hmm. And it looked awful. It looked yeah, like another shot. You're how about. can you even tell where the hell you are? Yeah, there's a lot of that uh, in that in that scene showing through the brains, us, which I think the idea was to make it feel claustrophobic and like they were in danger, but it did mm-hmm. not work for me. You at just all. made it like, feel cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, it's a bummer. Uh, it's a bummer that we both like just really didn't didn't dig this one too much. Um, like it just, yeah, I just, I want to like this show so much. And I just, it's like, I don't know why I've lost all suspension of disbelief, <laughs> like, or, or we have or whatever, but well, like, everything feels so underwritten. It feels so, uh, slapped together. Yeah. I mean, I think it's cute that you still kind of want to blame us. Well, yeah. No, I just like, I think you lose suspension of disbelief because a show has, has, uh, betrayed your suspension of disbelief too many times. Right. So I was like, like so I didn't lose my suspension of disbelief. I know what happened to it. The writers <laughs> robbed me of it. They uh, mugged me in a back alley. <laughs> uh, well, uh, do we have any, um, have any feedback? Oh yeah. We got feedback. Let's, let's get it. Let's get to it. <laughs> I think this was from last week. Uh, Andre Spark says Inception meets Star Trek. Hi guys, uh, just as I thought, last these last few episodes are getting intense. I enjoyed seeing Michael have to deal with her demons. She seems calm and collected now compared to season one, but it was nice to see that she still has stuff to deal with. The Mall Breen scenes were great. Once that guy was about to fire on the library, it looked like she was about to turn uh, to the Federation. But then she took over instead. I wonder if she will somehow see that she needs to work with the Federation, though. Can't wait to see how it turns out. Keep up the good work. I I, I don't think she's going to turn to the Federation, Andre. Hmm. I just don't. I I still think there's a possibility for that. Or I think there's a big possibility that inside this like portal that they're all in now. Uh, did did Maul make it in there? Oh yeah, Maul jumped in before Michael did. Yeah, that's right. So, and that was one of the cool things I liked about the episode was that she had a freaking portable pattern buffer that she used yeah. to preserve his body in the transporter buffer, and then like stuck it on her wrist. Yeah, hundred percent. Before I, jumping into the, I, that, that was a lot of fun. I definitely think like there's a possibility we will get Locke back, um, and it just depends on like if we get Locke back, do we? Does he want to be back? Like, will she be? so uh taken with herself you know like the the idea that like she's she's conquered the brain now you're like oh we can go back and we can unite the houses and be brain and you're like no that's not that's the i chose a different life with you like this is not the life i wanted at all and she's gonna be like no we finally have safety and he's gonna be like no it's not just about safety it's about having being where i want to be or whatever you know i don't know that's kind of where i'm yeah i'm I'm, i could see that conversation happening if he comes back you know yeah, when you first said it, I just saw Locke in my head going, there was no pain, no fear, no doubt, till you pulled me out of oh, heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was in heaven. Yeah, golly, I want to know so much about the progenitor technology <laughs> and the fact that, the, and like, and the progenitors, like, I want that to be the focus of this. Yeah. And the fact that we're all the way here and we have, and they're just now entering into that zone. It feels like no matter what this last episode is going to feel rushed. Oh yeah. Not to mention the fact that they shot the damn thing. Then they got canceled and had to go back and shoehorn some bullshit in to wrap the show. 
Uh, I'm just, uh, and by the way, this was one of the shortest episodes of the seas of the series. I mean, oh, like really? 40 something episodes. It was like uh, mm. 42 episodes, or 40 episodes, 42 minutes or 45 minutes, something like that. It was just, my God, what are y'all doing? I just, I don't understand. Yeah. Mm. Of course they may have had to cut stuff that was setting up the next season that they're not going to have. So yeah. Hmm. What else, any, any other, any other feedback? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tim Castillo Tim. writes, uh, let's see, Matt and Dave, you guys are great. Thank you, man. Thanks, Tim. Says, you find some positivity positivity in every episode, and I enjoy <laughs> that and need that, because I tend to focus on moments like this one. <laughs> I stopped watching LaGrange Point when the title sequence started. Discovery did not lose the artifact due to circumstances beyond their control, but they should have, because they are competent, intelligent, and trained to act. I would have bought them (laughs) being caught in the gravitational pull and the Breen showing up and grabbing it. (laughs) Why not do that? Don't Mm. make the crew look stupid by having them kill time for the Breen to show up and just (laughs) yank it while they're doing nothing but stare at it. (laughs) This was like a flip-flop of the villain monologue where Burnham is the villain and the Breen are the plucky hero that snatches the prize from them due to their conceit. Yeah, um, well, except it's yeah. like their like weird, their need to talk about the, the, the past and the science and the discovery of it all. And, it's just, and they just lose the thing they've been looking for this entire season. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I am baffled over and over by the ways the writers have the characters make stupid decisions like this. It's one of the most frustrating things about this series, and I just feel like this scene is the ultimate culmination of it. Do they not know time is the fire in which they burn? (laughs) (laughs) Great Generations reference. Yes, yes it was. This is... This is why I don't want this timeline slash time frame to be continued in in another series. They haven't done enough to convince me that they can tell good stories about ideas and concepts in this era. It feels like a creative wall has been hit and they can't overcome it. Strange New Worlds does tell them well. If they could do that for this era, I'd be on board. It's these writers. It's not this era. Mm. It's these writers. I I agree. Um, I agree. May, obviously, they could be writing different, uh, different stories here. Like this is not essential to this era, but like it's just what we've gotten so far. Um, Tim continues. I continue to enjoy David Ajala, though he was the best part of the Labyrinth episode, and the show was so pretty, such a pretty show. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll watch the rest of the episode now. <laughs> because I love Star Trek, and I need it all, like an addict. Yeah. You have to understand, drugs can make you feel good. Mm. Then he sends uh. us another email and says, hey, maybe I was wrong. I think this episode... <laughs> I think this episode heard my petulant gripes and said, how about the rest of this episode then? Uh, I stand by what I said about the moment in the beginning of the episode. That was real dumb, and I feel like it's made worse by how generally on top of things everyone is for the rest of the episode. But after the opening credits, I saw that Jonathan Frakes directed this episode, and I thought to myself, well, that's promising. And you know what? The rest of the episode delivered. It was great. Maybe I'm just emotionally unstable these days. I should probably (laughs) keep to myself, guys. No, Tim. I think Jonathan Frake's name convinced you it was a good episode. Yeah, I think I think maybe you like gave uh, gave Frakes uh, a pass. Like he 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 got a little more suspicion and disbelief than you were giving it prior. (laughs) Because I didn't know until it was over. Tim Tim saw directed by Jonathan Frakes and started going, "Don't lose suspicion. Don't lose suspicion. Don't lose suspension. Don't lose suspension." Yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, we got Stu here. Stu! Sorry, and I didn't mean to not yell Andre's name. I I feel bad. I didn't yell Andre when Andre wrote in. Just said, uh, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't on top of it. But Andre! Nah, and now Stu! <laughs> uh, Stu has, sends us an email titled, The One Where Reese Goes Beast Mode. <laughs> we just call it Reese Mode around here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hey. 
Just want to add to something Dave said last week and say I also would have been fine if this show had been them going to different places week to week and dealing with whatever the status is in this era. It was a big complaint of mine that they didn't do that after season three while the DMA storyline felt like a plot that could have happened in any of era of Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Also, I can't believe they recast Tilly with Holly Hunter for the Starfleet Academy show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. They're, yeah, I'm sure they're not recasting her, but, um, yeah, she's going to be a captain and chancellor of the Starfleet Academy. Interesting. For, uh, and Holly Hunter, of course, Academy Award winning actress. Uh, she's had nominations for Academy Awards several times. Mm-hmm. Happy to see her here. Yeah, absolutely. I like Holly Hunter a lot. LaGrange Point. Tilly pep talking Adira in the previously on. Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Another previously on part foreshadowing Michael slash book reconciliation being a likely part of this episode set during a crisis. Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Stu man. Saru, you know, even through the previously on and, (laughs) <laughs> he's already he's already really worried. I, they used you know last week I complained about the previously on that one moment that they included last week where it was like Stamets being like we have to get back the progenitor's technology and it just felt like Power Rangers to me again. Yeah. It felt like a children's show and it made me feel bad for liking it so much. They used it again this week. These the same moment I complained about yep. last week. They used it again and I was like, "Come on, guys, that moment is so embarrassing." Like it's I just, noticed it too. It's so embarrassing. Saru and Katrina. Now this is a relationship I give a fuck about. Not being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did. I I read it in like you remember the episode. Maybe you don't. Uh, there's an episode uh, where Homer be- in The Simpsons becomes uh, he's has a cannonball shoot into his stomach yeah vaguely and at some point like he comes out on stage and there are these two teenagers in the crowd and one goes oh homer simpson he's cool and the other guy goes dude are you being sarcastic and he's like i don't even know anymore (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that's what i just thought of yeah (laughs) Stu says, also, I'm surprised the writer of this episode didn't have an aneurysm writing the discussion between them and the also alien president of Starfleet HQ. At least they put that random human ensign interrupting at the last second. Close one. (laughs) I thought Tilly was going to throw up for a second when they hit uh, that turbulence. By the way, why doesn't that ever happen? Mm. They probably got like a pill or something. Yeah, maybe some... Some some drugs regulating their uh, system. Yeah. I kept hearing all this talk of lock on in the conference room discussion as lock on. I mm. think that's why they killed him off to avoid the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they just started calling him the scion. <laughs> yeah. They just needed Which some of name. that doesn't make any sense. Like when they were like attacking like when they were caught by those guards that they were like oh the, the scion and blah, blah, blah like the scion is dead what are you talking about like that shouldn't have worked the, the the entirety of their ability to like trick the brain here made the brain seem like complete Real dumb lack of a threat like uh, the, yeah it just seemed like completely inept yep um <laughs> They're going to fly a shuttle into the gap in the shield. They aren't going to use this as an excuse to do another space uh, spacesuit jump set piece. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they didn't have any more money. The money's gone, Stu. The show's yeah. over. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> they didn't even have time to like make uh, a, a model of that actor beaming out. They like literally, I, I looked it back to watch that scene, and it's just like, they just barely show the beam of light. As as it, uh-huh. also, there's no brain. Well, there were lots of brain in there. There's no brain. They didn't want to have to model 
the the like bodies flying out of the ship so either for like you know sensor reasons or for uh just like tech reasons it being harder to model bodies well so they just mm-hmm. disappear completely i guess you could say they beamed out too beforehand but like that's just headcanon yep adira this is your third year on the show stop acting surprised that people think you're competent <laughs> I think you know that I agree with you, Stu. Kind of disappointed they aren't going further in their brain disguises by smearing ecto-cooler jello all over their faces or something. Also, how come they just assumed that the brain wouldn't have scans that would check if the people with covered faces were actually part of their species? Yep. Yes! Makes no sense. As as it's like a, it's just a huge security flaw all around. And like the fact that they don't eat it, exploit it all the time to the point that they've solved it by now is insane. (laughs) Uh huh. Um, referencing Maul screaming in my language. Stu says, "Oh, check out this Maulinizer demanding the majority assimilate to her ways." <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Maulinizer's good. Now they added a second human to the diplomatic scenes. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to miss. Th- I majored in xenoanthropology as an all-purpose plot device so much. <laughs> Quote, now's not an ideal time. No, it isn't, Michael. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly knocks these Breen guards out? It can't be blows to the head when they're wearing helmets. I agree. Yeah. I mean, they, they do at one point have one of the characters grab some sort of like refrigeration tube or whatever from the side of their neck. Yeah. That made sense. Yeah. That made more sense. I want like a star Trek six moment where they're like Reese is like fighting the guy, you know? And he's like, I don't know. He just passed out when I hit him in the funny bone. And then like Iman shows up and goes, Mm -hmm. that was not his funny bone. Yeah. (laughs) Not everyone keeps their genitals in the same place. Reese. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, kind of hard to be invested in this tension with the, about Saru's safety when possible resurrection tech has been teased in the storyline. Right? Yeah. Maul's like, don't compare me to Rune. I wasn't attacking, attacking you or the Archive. I'm just sacrificing all these soldiers who follow me to try to open this box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She did keep pushing those guys into that portal. Yeah. I don't know where you're going. (laughs) It just gives them more fodder for next episode to either fight or to like fail the test. And so they get, you know, killed by whatever, a feral bunny or whatever, you know. Bunnies, bunnies, (laughs) it must be bunnies. Gosh. Oh, man. Good job, Dave. You tied my holy grail reference back into your uh once more with feeling once more with feeling reference good job yeah. buffy the vampire slayer for the win yeah <laughs> you've made he made a good point and you made a great point about the idea that they have the uh, so we we know they reshot something to change something from the ending of the show and uh i can't help but think they're gonna resurrect someone they're going to Spock this thing. Uh, like someone's coming back from the dead. And now they have sent Saru on this dangerous mission to like intercept all of this stuff. And now I just think like maybe they originally planned on killing Saru off in this episode. Uh, and then now they're bring they're going to kill him off and bring him back in the final episode, which will be terrible. Yeah. At least with Locke, it like there was some time to build up to it. Well, now they, they, they would have to kill him off and bring him back in the same episode. Also, like, this is the progenitor technology. I know that, like, the being able to defeat death is awesome and all, but, like, it just seems like a limited use of the technology, and I hope that's mm-hmm. not all we see them think about. Like, well, we got the progenitor technology. There's these two beings we wanted to bring back. Let's argue about that instead of, like, I don't know creation like you have the power of creation in your hands <laughs> like you want to yeah. and it's going to come probably come down to like a couple of crewmen they want to bring back or whatever i don't know it seems silly i don't know also i'm just hearing dr mccoy from star trek 2 in my head just complaining about like now watch out 
Genesis could do it in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it could be a terrible weapon. Could be, you know, the best thing ever. Mm. I can't imagine they're going to do it justice. Whatever happens yeah. now, you know, Stu even talked about how he was he liked uh, Saru and Tarina. But I swear to God, in this episode, I'm pretty sure they were just having a conversation they had the last time they were on screen together, which is like, yeah. oh, I can be logical and, and set aside my my blah blah, blah and for the, it doesn't seem to be moving it forward and, very well. I'm sure we've had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure too. Okay, what else does Stu got? All right, uh, in the shot where Michael and Book. Took their uh, turned their helmets off. I can see that their necks and non-breen skin was already exposed a bit. So, whoops! This is where the ecto cooler would have been useful. <laughs> I swear, when Reese said "I've got this" and jumped over the railing, I was like seventy for seventy percent expecting him to get instantly shot in the chest. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have made more sense. I feel like from a production standpoint, like the fact that you, you gave him a real hero moment last week to show off his character before you kill him off, you know, Mm -hmm. but this is just like, you made him such a badass before, after never giving him much to do at all. Yep. Stu says, Hey, Rainer took the captain's seat. I guess that means Michael is getting promoted to Admiral next week. Either that or she'll be given the enterprise. You know, Stu, I saw Rainer took the seat and I'm like, Oh shit. He means business now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i actually really that worked for me i think it may have been one of my favorite moments of the episode was uh when he's like our captain's in there the progenitor tech is in there let's do this like i don't know i i liked it i just liked i liked rainer sitting down and ready to ready to go to battle yeah yeah when the, when they start when tilly was like oh why have you ever noticed he doesn't sit down they're like everyone's noticed i was just like uh-huh and he'll sit down at the end of the episode, <laughs> when it's time for business, like that was predictable as shit. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sue says my typical snarkiness about the interpersonal stuff and nitpicks aside, this was a pretty good episode to me because it kept on point with the actual plot for the majority of it. They had a problem. They came up with a plan and most of the characters actually contributed pulling, pulling it off. I do wish the brain were less Imperial stormtrooper like in their gullibility and also how weirdly bad at fighting they are for a supposed warlike race that mm. Reese of all people, is able to hand some of them their asses. <laughs> the sequence of Discovery <laughs> ramming the ship's shields and doing a U-turn was well done, too. Next week, I expect it to be a split between Discovery and Starfleet having some standoff or battle with Breen, while Michael and Maul have minor archaeological jaunt with a possible progenitor appearing at last. Also, maybe Saru will die, but it's okay, because he recorded a holographic message to tell everyone he loves them, 3,000. Before he left or something. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Yeah, I uh, I think it would be interesting and also infuriating if they kill Saru and they have the tech and then they're like, and Tarina's like, no. Mm. It is against everything he stands for. Yeah. Or that some would, stupid shit. That would be frustrating and yeah, I, and I, also though, if they kill him off just to bring him back, or anyone they just kill off to bring him right back, it'll it'll feel uh, not great. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. This whole having the technology to bring people back from the dead, also like it's an assumption that like someone made because if it can create life, it can also bring them back from the dead. That's like not been demonstrated at all. <laughs> it's just an assumption yeah. one of the scientists made. I don't know. I don't know, man. Wait. I really, I'm really hoping this last episode brings it together and we'll enjoy ourselves in this here last episode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am too. I, I really want it to uh, go well. I want it to be a good last episode, but you know what? There is a part of me that's kind of like, you know, it, I think it's time. It might be time for enterprise to finally have the burden of having the worst last episode. Oh. Taken off of his shoulders. I see. I see what you're going saying. Yeah. Hmm. It might be time to crown a new loser. 
if it comes down to that, I'm okay with it. Uh, but I really do want it to be great. And for what it's worth, I didn't think that last episode of Enterprise was that bad. Right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think part of watching a show like this, especially with all the things they changed to make this show, the ways that, the ways that Star Trek changed to make this show, um, has a sort of like, even even now, seven years later or whatever, are still sort of questioning what it, like what we think of the way they're the way they make this show and everything. And you know, looking back on it, we'll probably have warmer regards for this show than we do now. But I, uh, I, I, I like I generally like like these characters and like really yeah. want that want the show to be great. Um, but it's just these little episodic things that I'm watching and I'm like, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Then what are you doing? Why, why are you focusing on that right now? Like, I don't know. Like most, I feel like most Star Trek has, has either allowed the storyline to help solve the personal issues of the crew where like they have to accomplish something in the mission to like come to some catharsis about whatever their emotional issue is. And then it's uh-huh. like during the denouement of the episode, they're having a conversation about like, yeah, I really learned something from this, you know, or, or like they'll have weird episodes. Like, um, what was it called? The baseball episode or whatever. Like take me out to the hollow suite, take me out to the hollow suite where they'll just like, give us an episode with limited stakes so that they can focus on those issues, you know, um, and then this show just insists on every episode sort of inserting these moments where they're f- over focusing on the emotional impact of what's happening instead of like worrying about the mission that is currently happening. And it's once you see it and once it's annoying, it just stays annoying and it just like, yep. yeah, it's, it's frustrating. <sighs> well, anything else you got about this episode, man? Nope. I no, I'm good. I'm awesome. I can call it. Well, I can call it and happily move on. Yeah, from this episode, <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 in high hopes for next week. I'm digging. I'm I'm excited for it. Um, so we'll be back then to talk about uh the finale of Discovery, Jolan True. Live long and prosper. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 